All rise. Veuillez vous lever. The International Criminal Tribunal for the Former Yugoslavia is now session. L'Orient du Tribunal Penal International pour l'ex Yugoslavie est ouvert. Please be seated. Yes, Mr. Milosevic. The interpreters kindly request that the microphone be switched on. Microphone, please. The, the microphone should be switched. It's on now. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. I said... I that I hope and assume that, according to the rules you explained to me, I won't be interrupted. I should like to start off by, saying the, uh, by showing a videotape. So I'd like to show a video first, and then I'll continue speaking after that. Yes, let that be done. navodno iz humanitarnih razloga. Ljudi u Jugoslaviji i danas pate zbog ratnih posljedica. Otrovna uranijumska prašina i neeksplodirane bombe ugražavaju stanovništvo na Kosovu. Ekološke posljedice vazdašnjih napada na to ne mogu ni danas još da se sagledaju. Poznato je da rac nije rešio probleme na Kosovu, već ih je zaoštrio. Can we have a translation of this, please? Can the interpreters assist? The tape is very fast and the interpreters do not have the text of it, but we'll do our best. Thank you. Yes, let's let's play the tape again. Navodno iz humanitarnih razloga. Ljudi u Jugoslaviji i danas pate zbog ratnih posljedica. Otrovna uranijumska prašina i neeksplodirane bombe ugražavaju stanovništvo na Kosovu. Ekološke posljedice vazdašnjih napada na to ne mogu ni danas još da se sagledaju. Poznato je da rac nije rešio probleme na Kosovu, već ih je zaoštrio. Masakri i ješnička čišćenja od strane Srba stvarali su i u Nemačkoj ratnu atmosferu. Danas Značajan razlog za rat je bio navodni masakr u Račku. Od početka je po tom pitanju bilo sumnje. Sumnje koje danas, nakon najnovih istraživanja, postaju sve jače. Sledi izveštaj. Ime ovog sela na Kosovu je kratko, ali poznato u zelom svetu. Račak. Srbi su ovde navodno počinili strašan masakr. Masakr koji je između ostalog doveo do napada na to avijacije. Račak u januar 1999. godina. Milija Bogna, šef verifikacijone misije OEPS-a, stigo je sa više televizijskih ekipa. Našli su 44 dela. To je masakr, rekao je Voker, a ne žrtve građanskog rata između pripadnika OVK i Srba. Dela su Dela sa povredama na licu, više njih sa ranama kao posle eksekucije. Potrebno mi je jednostavno nekoliko minuta da se saberem. Ali šta se zaista zbilo u Račku? Ovdje na Prištinskom univerzitetu i finski patolog Helen Rantar pregledala je tela. Ovdje su se javile sumnje da se u Račku zaista radi o masakru. Njena istraživanja ukazuje na nešto drugo. Po prvi put ona o tome priča za televiziju. We hear her talking for the first time on television. Svesna sam toga da je cijela ta scena bila namještena. 
jer to je zaista moguće uraditi. Na to su ukazivala naša prva istraživanja. Isto tako i kasnija forenzička ispitivanja koje smo sproveli na licu mesta u onove druge 99. godine. I rezultati toga smo direktno dostavili Međunarodnom sudu u Hagu. Ambasador Walker je došao u račak u subotu i to je bila njegova lična odluka da taj događaj kvalifikuje kao masakar. Ja sam sistematično izbjegavala da koristim taj termin. Postoji sumnja da se radi o masakru. Šta je moglo da dovede do tog događaja u račku? Helen Ranta raspolaže podacima o tome da se među poginulima u račku nalaze i pripadnici ove kade. Račak je u to vreme bio u polište ove kade. Uveđena sam da postoje dosta informacija da je u to vreme u račku bilo nesumnjivo sukova između srpskih snaga i ove kade. Osim toga, rečeno mi je, a i čitala sam informaciju o tome, da su na tom mestu i tog dana ubijeni pripadnici OVK. Šta se dogodilo u Račku? U stimci od 15. januara 1999. godine srpski policajci pretražili ulice i kuće u Račku. Pre toga bilo je napada pripadnika OVK. Tek kasnije ovdje će biti pronađeno 44 tela. Da li je navodni masakr bio možda posljedica oruženog sukova između OVK i srpskih snaga? Evo šta o tome kaže jedan pripadnik OVK. Vidjeli smo Srbe kako dolaze. Zauzeli smo položaj i otvorili vatru. Znali smo da će na svaki naš napad da se osvete na civilima. Račak, posljednice provokacije OVK, u ameriškom ministarstvu spodnih poslova u Washingtonu predpostavljalo se da se upravo tome radi, kaže osoba koja je upoznata sa tajnim izveštajima američke administracije. Nesumnjivo da je OVK hladnokrovno računala na to da će gubiti njenih civila i njeno predstavljanje kao žrtve u svetu da stvori uslove za intervenciju Zapada. I nemački ministar odbrane sumnjaju u reči Filipa Walkera. Jer u ovom tajnom izveštaju nemačkog ministarstva odbrane o situaciji na Kosovu stoji. Albanci su verovatno ubijeni u napadu srpskih policajaca 15. januara 1999. na pripadnike OVK u tom selu. Jedan dan kasnije se kaže u dodatku. Volker je priznao 22.1. godine u Prištini da mu prilikom obilaska Račka nisu bile možda poslite sve okolnosti događaja. Račak je i u Sjedinje američke državne bila glavna vest i pozivi na rad. Postali su sve glasni. Da vidima Volkera bilo to odlučujuće. To je kod u Evropi, uključujući i OEPS, pojačalo mišljenje da sada treba nešto da se preduzme. Nije to početak razvoja događaja koji je na kraju dobro do bombardovanja. Mrtvi u račku. Izgleda da nikad nećemo saznati pravu istinu, ali mrtvi su iskorišćeni da se učutkuju sumnje u smisao vazdašnjih napada. I tadašnji nemački general pri OEPS-u bezuspešno je upozoravao. Walker je okupio oko 30 novinara, otišao sa njima tamo i posle kratkog vremena saopštio da se radi o masakru Srba. U tom trenutku on nije mogao da donese bilo kakav sud. Ovo mišljenje međutim preuze OEPS, Ujedinje nacije, sve vlade svetove. Dan kasnije, NATO se sastao na vanrednom zasedanju, što je bilo sasvim neobično. 
Ovim svojim ponašanjem Walker je zapalio pitnjice. Za rat koji je bio prekrišaj međunarodnog prava, rat u koji su brojni civili planili život u Njegovi, rat za koji nemački političari snosa odgovornost. Šta se zaista dogodilo na Kosovo, šta je bilo propaganda koja je namjerno obmanjivana nemačka javnost? There's more. Dragi sugrađani, NATO je večeras počeo sa vazdušnim udarima protiv vojnih ciljeva u Jugoslaviji. Time će NATO alijansa sprečiti dalje teške i sistematske povrede ljudskih prava i humanitarnu katastrofu. Jugoslovenski predsjednik Milošević vodi tamo bezpoštedni rad. Mi ne vodimo rat, ali smo pozvani da pronađemo rešenje. Pođoljubivo rešenje, ali čak i vojnice. Ovaj film pokazuje kako je stanovništvo već od prvog dana rata na Kosovu obmanjivano. Ovaj film također pokazuje kako su činjenice izvrtane i izmišljane i kako se manipulisalo, ali i lagalo. Ovaj film pokazuje zašto su padale bombe na Belgrad. Počelo je lažima. NATO je tvrdio da je bacao bombe kako bi zaštitio živote kosovskih Albanaca. Ali kada su pale prve bombe, vidjeli smo ovakve slike. Srbi koji su ispunjeni strahom bežali u podrume i ono malo sklonište u gradu. to take cover in the basements and the shelters that existed in town, although there were few of them. The presenter of a surf radio said that a group of planes were nearing Belgrade and asked the citizens to turn off all the lights. Attention, attention, a large group of enemy planes are approaching Belgrade. Citizens, please take cover and wait. The fear was visible in Serb children even before the bombing actually began. Ali bile su i suviše stvarne da bi bile srpska propaganda. Strah od rata je nedeljiv. Odlučujuća je međutim slika koju nudi rat. This is the picture of war. The NATO port parole knew the power of images. The most important thing is that the enemy has the monopoly over pictures and images, which would show the world public NATO's tactics, and not Milosevic's. 
Viele Journalisten, mnogi novinari su govorili o Miloševićima dijelu, čini še i samo reči. Sledeći put, kada ARD, BBC, CNN prikažu slike bombardovanja ali vidite ovo ovde, masovno grobnje, ali ljudi koji su namenu ali NATO nije raspolagalo na primjer slikama masovnih grobnica i njihovim licima kao i na licima staro skloništima na vidu strah i pađe. Just as you could on the others a little while ago. Ali šta govore ove slike? But what do these pictures tell us? What do they show? Do they help NATO? Don't they act as an appeal, saying save us? Zar ljudska patnja nije obaveza? Is not human suffering? A terrible thing. Human rights to Kosovo Albanians. Is that a priority or not? Nemački ministar odbrane Rudolf Scharp objašnjava 1990. godine zašto je poslao nemački vojni uvijek u Kosovo. Nikada ne bismo preduzeli vojni poražba, ne bi bilo humanitarne katastrofe sa 250.000 izbjegljica na Kosovo je potrebno preko 450.000 izbjegljica na Kosovo je potrebno. Nebrojeni mrtvi, to još pre NATO bombardovanja. Ova OSCE, Organizacija za evropsko bezbednostne zdravlje, je to trebalo da zna što je bilo u Kosovo. Da li je dakle pretila humanitarna katastrofa? Da li je tadašnji nemački general Fri Oepsu i američki diplomata na Kosovo? Osnova za legitimnost nemačkog učešća bila takozvana humanitarna katastrofa. Međunarodna pravna katastrofa je postojala pre NATO-a. Do početka vazdušnih napada na NATO se nije prihvatio humanitarna katastrofa. Sigurno postojali su humanitarni problemi i bilo je mnogo izbjegljica na NATO, ali to je bilo ovako. Ljudi su napustili svoje sela kada su Srbi preduzmali akcije protiv ove kaže, a onda su se vraćali svoje kaže na kaže. I čini se da su svi znali da će doći do humanitarnih katastrofa nakon pokusa bombardovanja. Ovo je zrastrava u Kosovo, od nas na licu mesta, među stanovništvo. Jasan sud. Nasilje na Kosovo. Ni u jednom izveštavu OEPS-a se ne spominje nagoveštaj pretiče humanitarne katastrofe. No reports from the OSCE speak of an imminent humanitarian catastrophe. The situations that did exist on the ground are similar to the images we are showing now. Forces fighting against regular army units. A civil war, that is what the OSCE said in its report. The inhabitants of villages would flee in the face of onslaughts of this kind. Later on, for the most part, they would return to their homes which were frequently destroyed.
The NATO in Brussels was NATO in Brussels was uh, informed with the OSCE reports, which coincided with its own reports. However, these details and knowledge were not uh, made public knowledge at any of the numerous press conferences. On the contrary, at the last meeting of NATO on the 14th of March 1999, before the war broke out, they said that, we, that it could be said that the violence came from terrorist actions by the KLA, and the Serbs reacted overly violently. But, uh, at that time, they thought that the situation could be kept in check. Nevertheless, NATO forces did prepare for an attack on Yugoslavia. At the same time, the German defense ministry held meetings, but they too did not think that a humanitarian catastrophe was imminent. And in the defense minister's documents with respect to the situation in Kosovo, uh, it said something different to what Rudolf Sadik said. Here we have a quotation from a secret report, intelligence report, of the German Defense Ministry. In the past few days, there were no significant clashes between Serb forces and the KLA. The Serb security forces limited their actions to routine operations, the control and patro patrolling of the area to check for weapons and Checkpoints on the main road. But preparations were nonetheless underway for an attack. When the first bombs fell, however, the NATO countries did not lend wholehearted support to the drive. The political leaders now took the lead. They were the democratic representatives of the people and knew what uh, news items were important for their countries. Rudolf Scharping really did a good job. It wasn't an easy one, especially for Germany, for whom for the past 15 years defense was the only security for the country rather than intervention by their soldiers. Psychologically, this new definition of a security policy is not an easy one. Mr. Sharping, but Chancellor Schroeder, not only Mr. Sharping, but Chancellor Schroeder, they were excellent examples of political leaders and in their attempts to shape public opinion. And I am very happy that the Germans understood this. All the with all the collateral damage taking place, they remained on course. Had we lost German public opinion, we would have lost public opinion in the whole alliance. The fight for public opinion was kept up. Wartime propaganda for domestic purposes was no longer sufficient. Pristina, the capital of Kosovo, was the scene of wartime propaganda with the focus on the football stadium. And we can see destruction and the vestiges of destruction around the stadium today, although the grass is being tended. At the time, the Serbs had a camp for Albanians in this area, and Rudolf Schalp spoke to the public in 1999, making this assertion. It is much more important what is happening in Kosovo now when we hear that in northern Pristina there is a concentration camp, when I hear that teachers and pupils are being rounded up, and the teachers killed in front of their pupils' eyes, when the Serb inhabitants are being appealed to to write up a, big, a capital letter S on their home so as not to be expelled. No civilized European European must close his eyes to facts of this kind.
Slovo S za zaštitu Srba suštine je postojalo ni na jednim različitim okrištima. Čak nije u pogledu kontinuitetu stadiona. Ovdje je možda samo zaletila pokoja lopta igrača. There might just have been a football here, or perhaps a cigarette end. Rudolf Scharping, even after the war, in his journal, he spoke about numerous prisoners being held here. And Germany's foreign minister compared the Serbs to the Nazis on many occasions. Do današnjeg dana Šarp and Prisha have remained by their views. Ja sam se tako izjasnio da postoji sumnja da su ljudi zatvoreni na stadionu. I said that there was every reason to believe that people were held in the underground passages of the stadium. Mi smo pokušali da to razjasnimo, ali izjave se dokupostojile. We have statements by eyewitnesses. Ako je neko nešto znao o ovome, to je ono Šabankelmeli. It must have been Šabankelmeli, a Kosovo politician. His house is right by the stadium. Kao što i sami možete da se uverite, odavde se pružu pogled tačno na stadion. We have a good view of the stadium from here. You can see everything. I didn't notice a single prisoner at that time. The stadium just was just used as a heliodrome. And while he is talking to us, we can see a team emerging on the stadium. You can see helicopters landing here, that's all. Helicopters landed and the soldiers got out of them. They boarded the helicopters and got off them. The football stadium in Pristina, a concentration camp, though that was wartime propaganda. And something that had been concocted. Ovdje moram zaista da se obuzdam, jer poređenje Auschwitz-a sa situacijom na Kosovu je nevjerovatno otvrnje. Stidim se kao Nemac što nemački ministri tako nešto izgovaraju. Naši Nemac bi dospeo pred sud kada bi na taj način omalovažavao Aschwitz. Kada nemački ministar priča o koncentracijom na Kosovo, to je na istoj liniji gdje su konclogori ustanove i objavne određene istorijske situacije situation and existed during the Nazis in Germany. I think that it is unheard of that the Germans were the ones to use comparisons of this kind. Ovo nije jedina ratna laž koja je otišla u svijetu kako bi se obezbedila podrška javnosti. Primjer, malo se je u Kosova rugo. Mesto je za vreme rata ostalo skoro netaknuto. Sada, dve godine kasnije, ljudi se ponovno vali poljoprivredom. Uobičajna seoska zahodne ugovore, ali ipak drugovo ima posebno značenje za ratne Kosovo. Priča počinje na imanju šef Keta Beriše. Priča koja će kasnije u dalekoj Nemačkoj postati udarna vest. Bio to 29. januara 1999. godine, dva mesta za pre početka vatošnih napada NATO. Komušije su izgleda da li čuli pucnje iz pravca Berišine kuće. Šta se dogodilo? Tada, 29. januara, dogodilo se sledeće. Bio je petak, pet sati ujutro kada je to počelo u kućima komušije Berišine kuće. 
Čuli su se Rafali iz automatskog oružja. To je trebalo 3-4 sata automatskog oružja. Posle 3-4 sata pucnjava je utišnjava. Oko 10 sati prilazila nam je grupa policajaca. Evo iz ovog pravca. Otac i ja smo ih videli. Kada su nam prišli na oko 50-60 metara, nije mi ostalo ništa drugo nego da pobegnem iz te. Otašao sam u drugi pravac. Otašao sam u drugi pravac. Ovaj izrešetan minibus podsjeće na te dane. Ali šta se da tačno desilo u Rugovi? Masakra Srba nad nedužnim civilim, rekao je Rudolf Šarpin. Dva mjeseca kasnije, 27. marta 1999. godine, ministar odbrana je prezentovao svoje dokaze. Ovo što vam sada pokazujemo, za to su potrebni jako živci. Ali to pokazuje sa kakvom brutalnom. However, this shows the brutality with which all of this started. Kada pogledate ove fotografije, moći ćete lako da prepoznate o čemu se tu radio. Evo vidite uniforme srpske specijalne policije. To jasno pokazuje da su ovdje učestvovali srpske specijalne snage i vojska, a kasnije i odlužani kriminalci. To su stravične slike i moram da se trudim da koristim u smiren ton kako ne bih eksplodirao. Zato vodimo rat. To je što je naslovi i u štampi koje je objavila fotografije. Ali njegove strašnjice su već tada mnogo bolje znali da to nije bio masakar. To nije bio masakar na civilima. Pisala je u tajnom tešnjištva. Taj je nakta samo za službenu upotrebu. Mnogo od vas je znamo. 29. januara 1999. u rugu bu pio u Vijenu 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 were killed in Rugova. This was therefore a conflict, not a massacre, as the Minister of Defense claimed. These images from the footage made by our Western TV station offer proof of what had actually happened. Military equipment and arms by the Bodies of the alleged civilians who were wearing military boots with the signs of the KLA. However, what happened before the Western journalists came? The example, as far as the example of Rugova is concerned, what did you actually base this on? Well, on the reports of the observers who first came there, did you paint a correct picture of what happened in Rugova as it things act? actually happened. Yes, this is quite correct. The first observer of the OSC who arrived is this man on the left-hand side. That is a German policeman, Henning Hench. It is correct, at any rate, what the Minister of Defense said on the first day in his statement that I heard and saw on Deutsche Welle that this and this does not actually coincide with the way I had portrayed things to him. The official report about the events in Rugova makes no mention of a massacre over civilians. This is where we found a bullet-riddled red minibus with a total of 14 bodies. Three bodies were outside the vehicle. In the garage, there were five more bodies of KLA fighters in uniform. 
dann ging es noch etwa 300 Meter weiter. 300 Meter weiter, dann haben wir noch vier weitere Leichen gefunden. Und darüber hinaus, Atela, die uns auf der Strecke von 300 Meter weiter gezeigt haben, haben wir die Leichen von der Minister der Verteidigung gefunden. Wir haben die Leichen von der Minister der Verteidigung gefunden. Wir haben die Leichen von der Minister der Verteidigung gefunden. Wir haben die Leichen von der Minister der Verteidigung gefunden. Wir haben die Leichen von der Minister der Verteidigung gefunden. Wir haben die Leichen von der Minister der Verteidigung gefunden. Wir haben die Leichen von der Minister der Verteidigung gefunden. Wir haben die Leichen von der Minister der Verteidigung gefunden. Wir haben die Leichen von der Minister der So, also entstand dann so, dass dann erstmal die Obisnimzi und dann wird man die Exekutie, die Frage ist, ob es da wieder Minister Sharping hat gesagt, dass es nicht mehr ist. Es war absolut klar, dass es kein Massaker über die zivilen Bevölkerung war, denn according to OSCE-Reports, even KLA Commander stated that fighters for the great Albanian cause had lost their lives there. However, the German minister turned this into a massacre. New York. New York, April 1999. While Sharping was talking about a non-existent massacre and a concentration camp that had never existed, the process was proceeding at full steam in Germany and the United States. A war atmosphere was being created because the NATO strikes were against international law. Only the UN would have the mandate to wage this kind of war. However, there was no mandate of this nature. The security people were very busy then because heads of state or government were meeting and the debates behind closed doors were becoming increasingly sharp. April 1999, in the United Nations debates were going on about the war. At the same time, air strikes were proceeding 6,000 times in total without approval of the United Nations. This is no surprise because the policy of the United States is very well known in the United Nations and also its attitude towards the World Organization. Already in 1993, Clinton in a secret report pointed out what America's policy would was charted in a report. If necessary, we will go with the UN. If necessary, without them. So NATO had to decide on behalf of the UN rather than having things the other way around. The intervention in Kosovo took place without the mandate of the UN, and this is an obvious violation of international law. The German Minister of Defense took part in this. But why? Ein wichtiger politischer Berater. Wahren politische Sowjetnik amerikanische Administration. Ein Freund. Ein neuer Christoph Tainin Plan auf dem amerikanischen Vlade. American advisor had access to secret American plans. Manche Regierungen. Bei den Schlanovi Ministerstwa spielen die Kosovo Prichio Dome der Kosovo Samo Projekte. Kosovo was only the beginning for future wars that Waito would wage in faraway countries. Washington didn't have to show his position in NATO. Washington didn't care about presenting its leading role in NATO because it was never questioned. We have seen that NATO was gaining a new role, which was quite different for the reason why it had been established. Which had originally been a defensive role. This is the premises where NATO meets. Was NATO supposed to turn into a new policeman of the world? As far as the United States is concerned, that is perhaps a usual stance, but it would be difficult to explain it to the American public and the world public because the war in Kosovo was increasingly being criticized, especially when the aircraft missed military targets and hit columns of people who were moving. They called it collateral damage, but the public became increasingly critical vis-à-vis -vis the NATO strikes, especially in Germany. The beginning of April 1999, Main NATO headquarters and now 
calls were being made to restrict collateral damage. After the column of refugees near Jakovice was attacked, the approval of the public in many countries, including Germany, went down by 20%. We had to work hard in order to win the confidence of the public once again. Milosevic made a mistake when he started expelling the Albanian population to Macedonia and Albania. There were these streams of uh, people crossing the border, and uh, there were TV crews filming all of this at the borders, and that is how the public came to support NATO efforts once again. These are the images that Jamie Shea was referring to, and this documents Milosevic's mistaken war propaganda, images of Albanian refugees at the Yugoslav-Macedonian border. Every evening, in every news program, this kind of footage could be seen suffering and expulsions. However, in Germany, obviously, these pictures were not sufficient. Now it was being said that the Serbs had planned the ethnic cleanse of Kosovo for a long time. The killings in Kosovo got a name, Operation Plain Planned Horses. I'm now going to talk to you about what happened for months, ever since 1998, on the basis of the Horseshoe Operation Plan. Some parts show that the Serb Army had not only prepared uh, the expulsion of the Albanian population, that this had actually begun. This shows that these systematic actions had been planned in October 1998 and carried out in January 1999. This was supposed to be this operation plan. The Serbs units deployed in the shape of a horseshoe surround Albanian civilians and expel them. Before the bombing, Serbs were systematically carrying out actions against the Albanian civilians. That's what this brochure said, and this image was there to support it. However, the date here says April 1999, that is to say after the NATO strikes began. That is why what happened in the village of Randubrava is no proof whatsoever of the existence of a plan called Horseshoe. Randubrava today. There are very few signs of war. This is reconstructed. that are covering roofs now. The villagers got them from a German organization. However, was it really the Serbs that attacked the village and torched the houses, as Minister Sharping had said? In that case, that would have corroborated the existence of Plan Horseshoe. The villagers left the village after the 25th of March, after the NATO airstrikes. In the evening, we received orders from the KLA that we were supposed to evacuate the population. On the 26th of March, here in this village, there was no one left. We took everyone to the village of Malusha, and it's only then that the Serbs started shelling. We were fighters of the KLA. We were defending ourselves, but this was impossible. We were helpless against tanks and guns. There were 85 fighters in all, but there were other people too. There was a total of 120 fighters. This has little to do with planned expulsions of a civilian population. Was Minister Sharping dispensing with the, the truth in his brochure? 
It is not easy. After all, there are witness statements as well. There are people who fled. There are people whose lives were threatened and who testified nevertheless. There were no OSC monitors there before the fighting started. Doch nicht nur das Dorf Randubra war für Rudolf Scharping was quite sure in the same in his brochure does not only refer to the village of Randubra as proof of the village of the operation of the photograph in the April of the village was also attacked. But this photograph was also taken in April 1999 when the airstrikes had already begun. This is where the village is, the one that is mentioned by the defense minister in his brochure. However, the village is not Safnovici, but Kršnica. Čak i danas su vidljivi tragovi rata. Even nowadays, the traces of the war can be seen. Many houses were raised to the ground. The 100 or so villagers will need a long time to rebuild their village. Thank you. Hvala dovikuju deca na nemačkom jeziku. Thank you, say the children in the German language, because the construction materials came from the German humanitarian organization over here as well. U Pekrštici Srbi su hteli na posebno podmu kao način da unište za uvek domove ove dece, navodi se u zbrošuvi ministarstva odbrane. Children forever in a in a particularly perfidious way, says the brochure. First, the Serbs would light a candle by the roof, and then they would turn on the gas in the basement. However, this was not a reaction to the airstrikes, but to the operations related to horseshoe plants, says Sharping. To say planned destruction before the NATO attacks began. However, in Prekrštica, people seem to remember something else. All of this happened already in June 1998. There were many people there from the Yugoslav army then who were getting closer from the direction of the neighboring village. However, we managed to turn the army back. Then we attacked them and we opened fire from heavy weapons and this went on for four days. For weeks, practically there was not a single place where a shell had not fallen. That is the way it was throughout this area. The destruction took place in June 1998. However, according to Sharping's words, Milosevic elaborated a horseshoe plan only later in December 1998. What happened? with the candles and the gas uh, that Sharping was talking about. No. The villages in our village were not torched in this way. This happened in different ways, but not in that particular way. The houses were ablaze because of the shelling, but not due to candles and gas that were lit. Auf gar keinen Fall aber durch solch eine Methode mit den Kerzen. Again, there is no proof of this alleged horseshoe plan, but there is evidence of manipulation and forgery by the Ministry of Information. This story that Serbs were entering villages and turning on the gas on the ground floor and lighting candles by the ropes in the attic show that 
Uh, this method does not work at all. You can't really torture a house that way. Really? No, this doesn't function that way. Chemically, physically, no way. This must be information that you got from eyewitnesses, which is either incorrect or that was not checked at all. Therefore, I would recommend to you that you do this test once again, but not with a gas, but with a gas bottle. However, neither of the variants worked. Gas is heavier than air. The minister also noticed how easy it is to detect such lies and manipulations. Later on, photographs of these two villages were shown once again, but without the mentioned text. This is an edition from 1999, and that text was removed altogether. May 1999. This is the second month of the war. There are more and more German pilots preparing to take part in the attack. And we know that it was civilian targets that were hit, not only military targets. NATO used especially destructive bombs in Kosovo. Despite the unpopular regime in Belgrade, the German public opinion began to wonder whether the war intervention in Kosovo was justified. Despite Sharping's assertions that Horseshoe, Operation Horseshoe existed, there was not enough proof to bear that out. Two years after the war, we asked Rudolf Scharping once again what happened with Operation Horseshoe. We had intelligence information, which I received at the beginning of April 1999 via the Foreign Minister. I asked our experts to check out that information and to compare them with information from the Electronic Surveillance uh, Service for intercept paramilitary formations, which was done. And only when this comparison confirmed our suspicions, we used them publicly. We are, I asked for a meeting in the Defense Ministry, and a meeting was accorded me in November. They told me that there was no Operation Horseshoe in existence, but just that the events in Kosovo were shown events that had already taken place. And we were able to check those events out on the basis of OSCE reports. Operation Horseshoe or Podkovica did not exist. That's what the experts at the Defense Ministry told me. These are the Albanian refugees from Kosovo, the victims of the Serbs, but not as the result of the Horseshoe operation. This was just a fabrication of the German Defense Ministry. Wartime propaganda, just as the alleged concentration camp in Pristina was, or the massacre of civilians in the village of the suffering of civilians was also the consequence of NATO strikes. The political debacle of the war in Kosovo was now being talked about, but the German government did want to involve its soldiers in the operation, and it had to win over public opinion. But the fate of these people was unknown. What would happen to them, nobody knew. In the past, the German military leadership was often criticized for keeping silent where they ought to have spoken out. I wanted to say something too, faced with a situation of that kind. I did not wish to leave propaganda of this kind intact, untouched. However, lies and propaganda are very often stronger and more powerful in wars. It is the weapon with which truth is slain.
samo, this rekao bih, is just jedan atom, an atom, manje od jednog atoma, even smaller than an atom, istine of the truth, even less than an atom of the truth, in the ocean of lies, i produkcije propagande i zloupotrebe globalnih medija kao sredstva rata protiv moje zemlje. Čuli ste nemačkog generala, a namerno smo odabrali nemačku, englesku emisiju. Mi smo prikazali srpsku. Ne poznajemo te ljudi. Čuli ste nemačkog generala koji kaže da se kao nemac stidi postupaka svoje vlade, a pošto čitate svu moju poštu, And as you read all the mail, my mail, I get a lot of mail, and I'm sure it gives you a lot of work. Then I'm sure you were able to read the letters of American officers who are ashamed of their own government, the letters I received from American intellectuals and soldiers ashamed of their own government, letters from French war veterans who are likewise ashamed of their government, and so on and so forth. 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 And so on in the West, vlada, rekao bih, where jedan potpuni we medijski mrak kad je Jugoslavia u pitanju, jer su svetske globalne mreže po zadatku bile upotrebljene kao oružje rata i pogrešno obaveštavale javnost i na zapadu se sve više pojavljuje ovakvih in the West, Ljudi kojima je ipak istina draža od komfora koji im pruža ponizno izvršavanje naloga njihovih političkih šefova. I ja sam siguran i javnost će to videti i potvrditi da će i tamo sve glasniji biti glasovi istine a da će sve veća sramota biti na onima koji su lagali o Jugoslaviji, koji su medijskim ratom napravili prednji odred stvarnog rata u kome su ljudi ginuli, u kome je došlo do velikih razaranja. Ali da pređem sada na ono što sam hteo da kažem u ovoj prvoj prilici koja mi se pruža posle sedam meseci da govorim pred javnošću. U ova dva dana svi tužioci koje smo čuli izgovorili su jednu rečenicu da oni samo sude pojedinicu. Vrlo je osjetljivo to da se poveže sa narodom i ili s bilo kim drugim. Sude pojedinicu, a ne narod. Sva tri tužioci su to rekli. Ali u svim optužbama oni optužuju ceo narod. Počeo od srpske inteligencije. Optužili su srpsku inteligenciju na čelu sa srpskom akademijom nauka i umetnosti. Čuli smo čak citate iz memoranduma srpske akademije nauka i umetnosti koji su navodno bili idejna podloga zločina nad Albancima, a reč je o memorandumu u kome su srpski akademici pošteno izneli situaciju pre sada već više od 15 godina i odgovorno govorili o situaciji na Kosovo. Ali to što obstužuju Srpsku akademiju i Srpsku inteligenciju je samo jedna stvar. Obstužuju Vidovdan i Bojna Kosovo u čak pod smešljivu primedbu žalosnog tužioca da ne zna šta u stvari mi to slavimo, šta smo slavili, što se ta dva miliona ljudi skupila na to Kosovo polje da slavi šestogodišnjicu, kad smo izgubili. A on ne zna 
What he does not know is the following. Kad može da optuži srpsku istoriju i bitku na Kosovu, da se ta bitka bila za Srbiju i Evropu, i za Srbiju i za Evropu. Ali nije samo ovde optužena srpska inteligencija i akademija nauka i vidov dani boj na Kosovu. Optužen je ceo institucionalni sistem Srbije koji mi je pružao podršku parlament, vlada, političke organizacije, mediji, razne druge i tako dalje. Dakle, i to je sve optuženo. Optužuju se građani koji su je masovno podržavali i nekoliko puta birali na slobodnim višestranačkim izborima. Jedino se tu slažemo da je moje ponašanje bilo izraz volje građana, samo što tužba obtužuje građane što su me podržavali, a ja vam kažem da je i ovo moje ponašanje ovdje izraz volje građana. Izraz volje na ovdje. Optužuje vojsku i policiju, dobrovoljce i teritorijalnu odbranu, koje, kako sam kaže, u buduće će da naziva zbirnim imenom srpske snage. I tako i čini, naravno. Optužuje Srbe i sve u Srbiji koji su me podržavali. I Srbe van Srbije ako su me podržavali. I te koji me danas u Srbiji podržavaju. A onda optužuje narod. A onda optužuje narod. Sve smo čuli u ova dva dana All this in the past two days. We have heard everything. And then he says that he is just accusing an individual. And that individual is my son. And he probably thinks that I am some kind of superhuman. 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 That I am da se bore protiv terorizma u Afganistanu, na suprotan kraj sve. I to se smatra logično i normalno. A ovde se borba protiv terorizma u srcu svoje zemlje, u svojoj kući, smatra zločin. Znači da ni u svojoj kući mi ne smemo da reagujemo na terorizam. A ja ću dokazati vezu između jedno i drugo. U ovoj lažnoj optužnici oni su otišli dalje nego što bi bilo čija mašta mogla da proizvede. Čak tvrde, to smo čuli u ova dva dana, da sam namerno izazvao agresiju NATO i rat protiv Jugoslavije i patnje miliona njenih građana samo da bih iskoristio priliku da pobijem Albanci. Ja se saista pitam da li su mogli da smisle neko inteligentnije objašnjenje. Idu čak još dalje. Juče smo čuli. Kažu, nisu me interesovali nikakve granice, već samo jedna granica između srpskog i nesrpskog. Iako je upravo Srbija, i Jugoslavija, svih tih godina Jugoslovenske krize bila jedina zemlja na prostorima prethodne Jugoslavije u kojoj nije bilo nikakve nacionalne diskriminacije i koja je u potpunosti sačuvala svoju nacionalnu strukturu. Ona je potpuno ista kao pre 12 godina kada je izbila kriza. Jugoslovenska realnost demantuje 
taj stravični stav i tu stravičnu izmišljotinu. Pa ćemo mi da ovakve nebulozne konstrukcije ovdje slušamo, ali ćemo zatvoriti oči pred jugoslovenskom realnošću koja nije realnost trenutka, nego je realnost čitavih više od jedne decenije i koja svojom neumoljivom tačnošću potpuno demantuje takve besmislice. Srbija i ja lično, dakle, vodimo politiku genocida izvan Srbije, ali ta politika genocida nekako ne postoji u Srbiji za koju smo u stvari jedino odgovorni, jer kao predsjednik Srbije ja sam odgovoran za Srbiju. A oni žele da mi pripišu odgovornost za sve što su oni sami učinili i za sve zločine koje su oni izvršili. Oni tvrde, to slušamo ova dva dana kako je naša, a ja sam Todorunu nazvao herojska, kako je naša odbrana, naša herojska odbrana od agresije NATO pakta bila samo privit i za koga smo koristili priliku da izvršimo zločine od Albancije. A vi vređate ceo narada. Vi u stvari činjeniću fakat koji ceo svijet zna, koji cela planeta zna, danonoćnog bombardovanja Kosova. Danonoćno. 24 sata svaki dan, 78 dana, na kome vazdušna uzbuna bila svakog dana 24 sata. Tu činjenicu hoće da ponište svedocima koje će da dovedu da kažu kako su bežali od srpskih snaga kako vi nazivate vojsku i policiju. Tu činjenicu u svetu poznatu, poznatu svakom građaninu planeti. Poništi će neki svedoci koji će ovdje da dođu i da kažu nismo mi bežali od bombi NATO, mi smo od srpskih snaga bežali sa Kosovo. A vidjeli ste malo čas zapadne snimke koji to demantuju. Zapadne generale, a ima ih još. I svi će morati ovdje da dođu. Ne morati. Neki veoma mnogo žele žele da dođu, da kažu i vama i vašim šefovima šta je istina, a šta laž od ove konstrukcije, a cela konstrukcija je laž. A i ovo bežanje o kome govorite kao o deportovanju upravo se poklapa sa bombardovanjem. Pa u samoj optužnici datumi koje su stavili, svi padaju u istom periodu kad i bombardovanje. Pa i to je čak još jedan dokaz da je potpuna jedna manipulacija činjenicama i pokušaj da se zločini prebace na žrtvu. NATO je čak bombardovao i masovno ubijao Albanci koji su se vraćali u svoja sela, koji nisu slušali UČK da beže jer ih je UČK prebijao i ubijao nastojeći da ih prisili da beže jer je to bila koncepcija o kojoj je govorila Olbrajtova mi proterujemo Albance. Dakle, Albanci moraju da odu sa Kosova da bi se dokazala teza da ih mi proterujemo. Letke su bacali iz aviona posle bombi na albanskom jeziku da pozivaju građane da beže sa Kosova. A učeka kao njihov savjezik isto je radio i ubija one 
koji su pružali otpor. A opet su se Albanci vraćali u svoja sela i nisu htjeli da beže za Kosovo. I ostajali su na Kosovu, a oni koji su bili u zoni teških operacija i sukoba sigurno da su bežali i morali su da beže. Bežali su i Srbi u Mađarsku. Bežali su u Republiku Srpsku. Mnogi koji su izbegli za vreme rata, bežali su nazad u Republiku Srpsku. I njih su verovatno proterale srpske snage prema ovoj optužnici i verovatno bi tako nešto mogli da se iskonstruiše. Ako za deset godina narednih možda se neko seti da nešto treba opet nekog da optuži za neku svoju prljavu rabotu koju je uradi. I ja se zaista pitan da li postoji su koji će 70-dnevno bombardovanje 24 sata svaki dan da predsrta na osnovu izjava navodnih svedoka o tome kako su morali da pobegnu na bazi te takve tvrdnje kako su to srpske snage njih istrivale. Ja hoću ovdje odgovorno da kažem. Tužilac takvu strašnu i neverovatnu laž upotrebljava kao sredstvo zločina. U ostalom, možda bi najbolje bilo da ulažite takvu tvrdnju tužilaca i da ova farsa pred očima citavog sveta konačno dobije svoju krunu. Ono što smo čuli vređa inteligenciju prosječnog stanovnika planete. Čuli smo juče tako jednu, rekao bih, kompoziciju koja glasi otprilike Gde su deportacije, tu su i ubijstva. A istine, gde je sukop sa teroristima, sa terorističkom bandom, bolje reći, ili gde je bombardovanje, ili najčešće i sukop sa teroristima i bombardovanje, jer nije bilo redko da kad teroristi krenu, onda imaju vazdušnu podršku za vreme rata svojih saveznika koji su ratovali protiv Jugoslavije zajedno s njima. Dakle, istina je gde je sukob i bombardovanje ili najčešće jedno i drugo, naravno tu je bežanje stanovništva. Pa se onda... U ovoj interpretaciji koju slušamo dva dana, taj sukop sa bandom i bombardovanje, a vidjeli smo to i na ovim zapadnim, a ne jugoslovenskim filmima, to se smatra ubijstvom počinjenim od srpskih snaga, a bežanje ljudi od mesta sukoba, to oni kvalifikuju kao deportaciju. Ponavljam, sa Kosova je stanovništvo isterivalo, učekan naredbama, prebijanjima i uvistima. Po broj jedan, po broj dva, NATO bombardovanjem i pozivima. To je istina o vašoj priči o deportacijama. I želim ovdje da kažem nešto što zna svako u Srbiji. U srpskoj tradiciji i u tradiciji srpske vojske ratni zarobljenik i čovjek bez oružja je svetinja. Svako ko je prekršio tu svetinju treba da odgovara. Ali to nije činila ni vojska, ni policija. Ja time ne kažem da tako nešto nisu učinili neki pojedinci ili grupe. Ali to nije činila ni vojska, ni policija. Vojska i policija je časno i viteški branila svoju zemlju. A pojedinci i grupe koji mogu da izvrše zločin postoje svuda u svetu i svuda su predmet osude i problema. I ne mogu se niči takvi prljavi zločini pripisivati vojci, policiji, državi, narodu, 
an army, a police, a people, a nation, a country, their government. It is precisely the members of this army and the police know the best how many terrorists had escaped from them, precisely by mingling with civilians. They would actually see them from a few hundred meters away, and they would easily recognize them in the masses of civilians, because usually they were only wearing their underwear, having thrown away their uniforms, so that they could escape. They all managed to 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 escape. Ni na teroriste, ukoliko dolazi u opasnost, povređivanje ili ubistvo civila. Mnoštvo ih je pobegla. Pa to su znali i američki predstavnici koji su špartali po Kosovu i s kojima smo o tome razgovarali. A naravno znali su i teroristi da vojska i policija ima strogu zabranu da nigde gde su civili ne smije otvoriti vatru i naravno to su upotrebljavali da lako umaknu. Da samo skinu gornji deo uniforme, uđu među građane i sklone se. O tome su komentarisali veoma mnogo puta, ali je ta naredba uvijek važila. Dakle, na sve vreme neutralizacija terorističke organizacije OVK bio je zadatak vojske i policije, prvenstveno policije was to neutralize the actions of terrorists and to protect civilians at the same time, to protect citizens. All orders, all actions taken by commands and individuals corroborate this. After all, this deportation could it have been organized, Bez neke organizacije, a nije postojala o tome čak ni nikakva ideja, ni nikakva akcija. Nikad ni pomenuta. Nigde, ni u jednoj varijanti. Čak ni u varijanti da bi mogli da dovedu i nekog svedoka. Pa vama se javljaju juče na televiziji svedoci čije se slike ovde prikazivali koji kažu da nemaju nameru uopšte da takve stvari potvrđuju da je to laž. Sinoć se javljaju, prateći, prateći prenos. Kad vi date pauzu, onda ih zovu novinari iz studija da pituju, evo sad je bila vaša slika, vi ste rekli nešto to i to za Miloševića. Kaže, ni govora nema i nemam nameru da idem da svedočim. Pa dovedite te svedoke da čujemo na kraju krajeva Ko su ti koji imaju, da kažu, ja lično ne branim ni jednom svedoku da dođe. Kogod bude ovde govorio istinu, neće moći ništa da kaže što bi moglo biti nečasno i povezano sa radom moje ličnosti, moje politike i moje vlade. Ništa. A možete ih dovedete koliko god hoćete. Neverovatan broj stvari se ovde iznosi kao neki dokaz, molim se. Šta ima ružno, sinoć, slušam ovde, kaže, odlikovana tri generala. Šta ima ružno u tome da su odlikovani generali koji su branili zemlje? Odlikovano je nekoliko hiljada ljudi za hrabrost pokazanu u agresiji NATO. Pa mi smo jedina zemlja koja je srušila natovski nevidljivi avion. Tako zvani nevidljivi avion. Za kojim je Hovruk objašnjavao kad se ne gledao u Wright-Patterson bazi i dodirivao rukom da su dve i po milijarde dolara potrošili da ga naprave. I kad mi je komandant baze objašnjavao da sad košta, ne znam, 40 miliona dolara, on mi je šaputa na ovom malaže, kaže, košta 250 najmanje, ali oni smanjuju trošku. Ali je to čudo tehnike koje niko ne može vidjeti, koje niko ne može ovdje, mi smo ga oborili. Pa valjda taj koji je oborio taj nevidljivi avion koji je došao da se je smrt među decom gore iznad Vojvodine, pa valjda taj zaslužuje odlikovanje. Zaslužuje 50 odlikovanja i svako koji je oborio avion je dobio odlikovanje. 
decorations. I Everybody koji who obolio, shot down a plane got a decoration. Everybody a decoration. Everybody who shot down a cruising missile was decorated as well. All kinds of cruising, kinds of cruising missiles you used over Yugoslavia. And not to mention how many thousands, tens of thousands of sorties were flown. We heard the conversation between General Short, who commanded the Air Force from the base in Florence, and his son, a pilot, who had been wounded over Yugoslavia. He was worried then. However, we will come to this in time. And after all, that takes off so it exists. And in due time, that will be clarified like many other things over here. But the government has not only got the right to be able to hold the fight for bravery in war, but also the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold the fight for the right to be able to hold And neither I nor anyone in Serbia know anything about this. Many people, as a matter of fact, in Bosnia itself, hardly know anything about this, except people locally. Of course, I'm not talking about major events. 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 Why was it portrayed yesterday as some kind of a criminal operation, so to speak? It's included in the indictment. This corridor near Brčko was the subject of at least 50 conversations between Owen and Stoltenberg and the representatives Muslimana, Srba i Hrvata u Bosni, Karadžića i Zbegovića i Boban. Uz prisustvo i moje i Tuđmano. I was present and so was Tujman as well. At least 50 times this was discussed because this corridor by Brčko links the eastern and western parts of Republika Srpska. When you look at the map, you will see this easily. The entire region of Banja Luka and the Bosanska Krajina. Communicate with the eastern part and further to the east with Serbia through this corridor. This was a vital route, always, and I don't see what the meaning of this is in this regrettable opus of yours. All of Bosnia and Herzegovina was actually a small-scale Yugoslavia, just as the big Yugoslavia consisted of several peoples, ethnic groups who lived together in harmony and developed. That is how Bosnia and Herzegovina consisted of Serbs, Croats, and Muslims. Your bosses i Jugoslaviju, i Jugoslaviju u malom, pa sad ispostavljaju račun na adresu sva tri naroda u Bosni i Hercegovini koje su gurnuli u građanski rat. Da bi što dalje od sebe odmakli stvarnu krivicu to keep the true responsibility as far away from themselves as possible. And this was a war that they had caused. After all, why were they forcing Bosnia to leave Yugoslavia if they didn't want a conflict? When they finally threw Bosnia out of Yugoslavia and when all three parties accepted the Kutiljero plan, 
for the organization of Bosnia? Why did they say to Izetbegović that he should withdraw his signature? The U.S. ambassador Warren Zimmerman, who said that to him and who could not deny it, wrote in his book that perhaps he had made a mistake when he said to Mr. Izetbegović that he should do that. And that's how the war began. The war began by the killing of the father of a bride at a Serb wedding party that was moving through the center of Sarajevo. The war started with the first killings of Serbs in various locations in Bosnia. The Serbs did not start a war. They did not start any conflicts. That's the way it was in Croatia. The massacre in Borovo Selo, the massacre in Plitvice, there are true historic facts that speak of all of this. And it is nonsensical to accuse the wrong side. Now, people speak of three peoples, three nations in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and this is a formula upon which Bosnia rests. And why did you accept a referendum in Bosnia without the Serbs? If there are three peoples there, if before and now, the basic principle has been that something can happen only if all three peoples agree. Only when the secession of Bosnia was supposed to take place was it possible to do this without the participation of one people. And that is to say a people who own more than a third of the territory of the land of the country and also that comprise more than a third of the population of the country. Scholars will be coming here, academicians. Ovoga što smo ovdje čuli, If da se pojave come, ovdje, jer eto, optuženi su da su oni neki ideolozi srpskog zločina. Been accused here as well as ideologues of some sort of crime. And yesterday, the prosecutor even suggested that ethnic cleansing in Bosnia was rewarded, and that the territory of Republika Srpska was grabbed. I wonder what your objective here is. And why are you saying or how do you dare say that Kosovo is not a border with Serbia? Kosovo does not border with Serbia. Kosovo is a 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 border with Serbia. The Hague does not border with the Netherlands. Many things would have to be understood if you don't understand them, then you should ask people who know. Have someone explain this to you, that in any army, in any army that I know of, there is a principle of single command, and that a single link is not missed in the chain of command when decisions are carried through. There is no anarchy, and if there is any deviation from this chain of command, this always results in a criminal act, and that is subject to appropriate sanctions. These stories of yours who contacted which unit, whatever, all of that is nonsensical. If there was this kind of organization, this would be the greatest possible chaos that anybody would be establishing, and who would organize and establish chaos in his own own country. Mr. Mr. Milosevic, it's time for the interpreters to have a break. We will uh, adjourn for 20... We will adjourn... We will adjourn for 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Okay. All right. For you, Vulvi.
Please be seated. Mr. Milosevic will take the next break at 12.15. In the break, I was informed that there was a portion of the tape, a small portion of the tape that was not shown. So I should like to ask that the tape be shown in full, and then I will continue with my what I have to say. Yes. Please, uh, one. The KLA had gone. When Serb forces pulled out in the afternoon, they announced they'd killed 15 KLA men in the action. The international monitors entered the village and reported nothing unusual. Only next morning did the full force of Serb retaliation become apparent. William Walker went to see for himself. We progressed up the hill and about every 15, 20 yards, there was another body. And so we kept going up the hill and I, I don't know how many bodies we passed before we got to a, a, a pile of bodies. In the location where there's 15 bodies, it By the time Walker arrived, the KLA had retaken control of Rachak. KLA guys, which we are not able to see. I think it's going to take me a few minutes to to uh, to determine what I really should say, and I'd like to hold a press conference in Pristina later this afternoon. Um, the facts, as verified by KVM, include evidence of arbitrary detentions, extrajudicial killings, and the mutilation of unarmed civilians of Albanian ethnic origin in the village of Rachak by the MUP and BJ. In other words, he blamed the Serbian police and the Yugoslav army. Walker was supposed to be an independent international official. But did he seek direct instruction now from the Americans? Without calling on any of my capitals, I told what I thought I had seen, which was the, the end result of a massacre. William Walker, the head of the Kosovo verification mission, called me on a cell phone from Rachak. But you don't remember calling Washington at all? I got a call from Bill Walker. He said, there's a massacre. I'm standing here. I can see the bodies. And you didn't speak to General Clark or anybody like that? Walker's comments gave America the green light to enter Kosovo's war. The KLA had pulled in its mighty ally. With Vrechak and with, with lots of others, Serbs were playing in the KLA hands. It will remain an, uh, I would say, eternal dilemma whether the KLA initiated these battles in the civilianly inhabited areas because it knew that the Serbs will retaliate on them. Personally, I don't think so. But of course, uh, <clears throat> it was a war. Clearly, after Rajok, extraordinary measures had to be taken. 
it clearly is a galvanizing event. And uh, the president really felt that we could then move forward, make clear uh, that the U.S. was going to be a part of an implementing force. But Albright knew the galvanizing effect of Rachak would not last long. She had to get her European allies on board. Have it finished? Yes, yes, we've završili ovu traku. Have they finished the tape? Is that the end of the tape? Nastavit ću gdje sam stao. Let me continue where I left off. U komentarisanju konstrukcija. In commenting the fabricated facts that we heard. You mentioned a scorched earth plan. I don't know where you got that from. Probably from Vietnam. The scorched earth plan is the same thing as the horseshoe plan. And everybody knows that that was a pure fabrication. And even when it was presented allegedly in the original, u originalu naziv In the original, Potkova, it was called Podkova, što je hrvatska reč, which is in fact Srbi a Croatian bi, word. The Serbs would Potkova, never have written the word Podkova. Potkovica. They would have used the word Podkovica, meaning horseshoe. I uopšte ne znam and šta znači ovde I don't know what objašnjenje u funkciji optužbi this explanation in the indictment means da su Srbi na Kosovu imali oružje. That the Serbs had arms in Kosovo. Pa svako zna da je svako na Kosovu imao. Everybody knows that everybody had arms in Kosovo. Ima bezbroj dokumentovanih primjera da su albanski teroristi upadali u kuće albanaca svojih sunarodnika da su albanski teroristi upadali u kuće albanaca svojih sunarodnika the houses of their own compatriots the Albanians da bi im otimali oružje. In order to seize weapons from them. Bezbroj dokumentovanih primjera. Countless documented examples of this. I zaista se, kad slušam, šta se ovdje govori, to everything uttered here, anybody with any reason must ask themselves how can criminal responsibility, criminal accountability, let alone any other political, moral, or any other kind of responsibility and accountability, and nobody could even put forward that kind of responsibility, but you are talking about criminal responsibility for the forcible secession of Croatia, and to ascribe that to me. It, it is not contested that Croatia effected a secession. Neither was it contested that that secession was by force. And how should that have, and could that have been stopped by me as president of Serbia to stop the conflict which the Croatian paramilitary had with the Yugoslav People's Army, which it was expelling out of the cities and bases in which that army had been stationed for a full 50 years, and they did not get to those bases of course, from Serbia, because it was the SFRY. The Yugoslav army was deployed throughout the territory of the SFRY. And here we see, in fact, that you have absolutely no notion, neither do you know anything about the Republican Ministries of Defense. They did not have any competences and authority. Their main job was to keep lists of military recruits and conscripts, recruits for the army and to see to the civilians part and the administrative funkcii, section, of course, all uh, with a view to the country's defense. You quote generala the political opinions Simovića, of generals, General Simovic, and none of his competences and activities. Everybody has the right to express political opinions and speak about anything he deems necessary. 
Šta je to unutrašnje raseljavanje na Kosovo? What do we mean by internal displacement of persons in Kosovo? I šta može da bude motiv unutrašnje Kosovo? And what could be a motive for internal displacement in Kosovo? And what is the explanation? When conflicts occur in one area, when terrorist bands and groups storm villages, killing inhabitants, and you will see later on just how many Albanians were killed before the war began, two and a half times more than the Serbs that were killed. But more about that later on. So of course the inhabitants of that village will flee to a neighboring village to stay with their friends or to the town, or if they have no relatives there, to a collection center organized by the authorities. So, internal displacement of the population. I don't understand it. What could be the purpose of internally displacing the population? Other than a malicious interpretation of the fact that people were running away. They were fleeing from an area they did not feel safe in. And where they thought their children would not be safe and they moved to other places. Da kaže da je neko Can anybody claim that somebody used force to displace persons internally or to expel people from the territory of their own country? That would be the greatest crime da. imaginable, and who would do such a thing? Dalje, pitam se kakvog smisla ima. I wonder what Dokazivati navodne zle namere prema Albancima koncentracijom trupa na jugu zemlje u vreme NATO agresije, a posebno na Kosovo, kada je svakom detetu jasno da je ta teritorija predstavljala prednji kraj naše odbrane od očekivane kopnene invazije NATO iz pravca Albanije i Makedonije. Pa gde je po mišljenju tužilaštva trebalo da postavljamo? Where, in the opinion of the prosecution, should we have deployed our forces if enemy forces were concentrated in Albania and Macedonia? Should we have deployed them perhaps on the Hungarian border, or should we have deployed them at the Albanian and Macedonian border? And let me also note that for 24 hours, 24 hours round the clock, during the B-52 bombers bombing the positions along the borders, with an offensive and the Albanians, Albanians were in the forefront to storm the territory, and they were never successful in this thanks to the granice. firm defense set up Kako at our borders. So what sense is there to explain the ill intentions towards Albanians or to pretti, say that that was so if you position your forces to stand up in defense of a defect, an, an attack, and not an imaginary attack, but a very concrete attack, an ongoing one that actually took place, and that is something that the whole world knows. Posebno su, rekao bih, nesmislene i zlonamerne, nesmislene, blag izraz tvrdnje o našem opredeljenju za vojno rešenje. A to opredeljenje za vojno rešenje upravo demantuje naše uporno nastojanje da se postigne politički sporazum, a sadržina tog političkog sporazuma koji je nudila vlada Srbije, koje je nudilo naše rukovodstvo je objavljena. Jedina tačka spoticanja u razgovorima sa američkom delegacijom u tom dokumentu, jer su se oni postavljali kao partner u razgovoru, osim par razgovora koje sam ja imao sa Rugovom, oni su bili protiv tih kontakta da bi upravo oni kontrolisali celu stvar. Jedina tačka spoticanja bilo je to što smo mi tražili da se asked političko rešenje zasniva paralelno naravno pravnosti građana i naravno pravnosti nacionalnih zajednica. Jer na Kosovu žive, kao što je delimično pomenuto u ovome što smo slušali, i Albanci, i Srbi, i Turci, i Muslimani, i Goranci, i Romi, i Egipćani. 
sedam nacionalnih zajednica. A da bi se realizovalo takvo rešenje, imali smo jedan sasvim normalan, konkretan prilaz da se ono realizuje tako što će Skupština Kosova imati dva doma. Već je građana, gdje će narodne predstavnike birati građani po principu jedan čovek, jedan glas, znači gdje bi ogromna većina bili Albanci, što nikome ne smeta jer su oni većina u toj pokrajini, i imati drugi dom već je nacionalnih zajednica, gdje će svaka nacionalna zajednica i Srbi i Crnogorci koji su uzeti zajedno kao jedna nacionalna zajednica, dakle, ne kao dve, i Albanci, i Turci, i Muslimani, i Romi, i Goranci, i Egipćani imati paritetno po nekoliko izabranih svojih članov. Pogledajte Sjedinjene države. Rhode Island, koji je manji od Beograda, ima dva senatora kao što ima i Texas, koji je veći od pola Evrope. Nema, logično je da u jednoj složenoj strukturi se to tako reši. To je bila jedina tačka sporna. Nije trebalo da bude prihvaćena jer se imao plan da se ništa ne prihvati da bi se našao izgovor za invaziju na Jugoslaviju, a danas se pred očima celog sveta pravi etnički čisto Kosovo samo od Albanaca i velika Albanija o kojoj ću kasnije govoriti. To je rekao bih, ta neonacistička ideja po kojoj je razbijena Jugoslavija, po kojoj se pre kraja karta Balkana i stvara Velika Albanija, je u pozadini. I ovoga što smo ovde čuli od tužilaštva i u tom kontekstu I u tom kontekstu hoću da kažem da tužilac nije slučajno pomenuo Nirnberg. Nije simbolično pomenuo Nirnberg. Njima je malo što su izvršili zločin nad Jugoslavijom i osvetili se za srpsku ulogu u njihovom porazu u oba svetska rata. Oni žele da nas koji smo žrtve njihovog zločina proglase za krivce, a mene simbolično uz pomoć ovog suda da izvedu pred Nirnberg da bi se promenile uloge. Taj zločin ubistva Jugoslavije i moje razapinjanje ovde, oni vrše danas rukama nekadašnjih saveznika, a svojih nekadašnjih neprijatelja. Sve istorijske činjenice to dokazuju, ali i svi aktuelni potezi to dokazuju. Svetska javnost to neće moći da previdi, uprkos sve koliko truda tužilaštva, uprkos sve koliko truda medija, a jugoslovenska javnost i ne samo ona već zna pravu istu. Zaista se postavlja pitanje kad čovek sluša ova dva dana šta dokazujete uopšte raznim fotografijama fotografije sa vrhovnog saveta odbrane čiji sam bio član i na kome prisustuju lica koja pozove predsjednik vrhovnog saveta mogli ste tako da pokažete moju fotografiju sa Rugovom ili sa Kristoferom ili s Kofi Ananom ne razumem šta ta produkcija znači. Šta dokazujete fotosima da policija zavodi red na demonstracijama i to bar stotinu puta manje brutalno nego što na vašim televizijama gledamo kako se zavodi red od strane policije u vašim zemljama. Kad su demonstracije i kad je ugrožen javni red i mir ili život i ljudi imovi. Šta dokazujete fotografijom za sakra na kojoj neko stoji tako da možda se prepozna negde podalje iza mene, čak ne ni neposredno, 
I ima hiljadu ljudi na toj sahrani. Šta dokazujete? Takvim fotografijama koje prezentujete. Šta dokazujete tvrdnjama da vam nisam isporučio that I did not hand over some people that you thought were the perpetrators of crimes. It is no secret. I would never hand over anybody to you because I consider that this is an illegal tribunal. And... I have already said that I said that to Albright when she asked me to hand over some people and I don't want to mention names here. Please give me a name. Tell our own organs and institutions that your organs and institutions supply our own ones with the truth. And the law courts in Yugoslavia will not da smo mi u Jugoslaviji već 1992. godine sudili za ratne zločine svojim građanima za koje je ustanovljeno da su ubili neke muslimane u Bosni i upali u neku grupu tamo i izrešetali ljude, pobili. 1992. godine niko nije ni znao da će biti i osnovan ovaj tribunal, niti je u ostalom to uopšte važno. Svaka civilizovana zemlja u svom krivičnom zakoniku ima visoko rangiran ratni zločin kao najveći zločin. Mi smo sudili 92. godine za ratni zločin. I onda sam joj govorio svojite dajte tu evidenciju koju imate. Nemojte se uopšte brinuti da ako je neko zaista učinio nešto prljalo, pobio žene i decu negde, maltretirao zarobljenika ili bilo šta drugo, gađo automobil crvenog krsta kao što ću vam pokazati da je gađo NATO na mostu u automobil na kome celom krovu piše crveni krst, slučajno je bio rumunski crveni krst koji je tu prolazio. Da će taj biti uhapši? Uh, that people sud. doing that will be um, no, arrested and brought to trial. So so I pa ne bi nikad don't isporučio. understand what you mean when you say I didn't hand over. I would never hand over. And even the handing over that is going on now is a violation of the Ali constitution and a crime in itself. But they are doing this because... It is a puppet regime that is in place today, a puppet regime which has to listen to orders, but not supported by the people. I am wondering what you are trying to prove with the existence of volunteers. You mentioned the existence of volunteers. Serbs, volunteers, 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 And you have Koliko no regard at all, you're not interested at all in how many Mujahedin Bosnu, came to Bosnia Kosovo, or to Kosovo, who uh, uh, had sabers with them used, that, they, uh, that were used to cut off heads. Zakteve, and later on, poznate, at, uh, at well-known request, they were released. Pa je onda, Kad dođe taj što seče glave Sabljom i Saudi Arabije, to normalno dođe 2000 km u Bosnu da pomogne Ali Izetbegoviću, ali ako Srbi odu da pomognu Srbima, e to je već... Uh, help their fellow Serbs, assist their fellow Serbs, then that is something that the prosecution deems necessary to take into Sada serious consideration. What are you trying to prove by quoting a sentence from a speech of mine held at Gazimestan, which was, let me tell you, a very good speech. I can say that it was an excellent speech, in fact. And I don't think that you could find any criticism of that speech. You quoted 
The latter part of a sentence, a small part of a sentence in which I state that we will have to fight many battles, which of course are not armed, although such battles are not excluded, that is an ordinary type of sentence that everybody uses today, because peace has still not become a stable, secure category in the present day world, in the modern day world. And if that were not so, why do states have armies? But then you are very skillful uh, in skipping and sly and skipping over everything else. I have received a fax. I received the speech by fax. So I shall try and find... Your quotation to demonstrate how you pulled it out of context. You pulled your quotations out of context. In that speech, I say, equitable relations amongst Yugoslav peoples are a necessary prerequisite for the preservation of Yugoslavia for its emerging economic and economic prosperity. In that way, Yugoslavia is not extracted from the social ambience of the modern and developed world. The world is prone to national conciliation, national cooperation. Economic, technological, and political development indicates that the people should cooperate and depend on each other, and that they must be more and more equal amongst themselves. A civilization in which the world is moving. Mr. Milosevic, if you're if you're reading, can you slow down for the interpreters? I understand that interpreter cannot follow fast reading. In the kind of civilization to which mankind is moving, it is only equitable, united people that can step forward. If we cannot lead the road into a civilization of this kind, then we must certainly not be at its back end. So, and nowhere on the soil of our homeland. Nemaju toliko smisla reči posvećene slozi. Do the words speaking about solidarnosti i saradnji među ljudima. And harmony and cooperation among people have so much meaning. Koliko imaju ovdje na polju Kosovu. Koliko imaju ovdje na polju Kosovu. At Kosovo Polje, in the field of Kosovo, which is the symbol of treachery and discord. Discord. In the collective memory of the Serb people, that discord was decisive for losing the battle and for the ill fate that the Serbs have had to contend for a full five centuries. And from the historical, if that were not so, from the historical viewpoint, Ostaje izvesnost da je narod svoju neslugu doživeo kao svoju najveću nesreću. I obaveza naroda je zato da je sam otkloni da bi sebe u buduće zaštitio od poraza neuspeha i stagnacije. Narod u Srbiji je ove godine postao svesan nužnosti svoje međusobne sloge kao neophodnog uslova za svoj sadašnji život i dalji razvoj.
Uveren sam da će ta svest o slozi i jedinstvu omogućiti Srbiji ne samo da funkcioniše kao država, već da funkcioniše kao uspešna država. Zato i mislim da to ima smisla reći baš ovde na Kosovu gde je nesloga jednom tragičnu i za vekove unazadila i ugrozila Srbiju i gde obnovljena sloga može da je unapredi i da joj vrati dostojanstvo. A takva svest o međusobnim odnosima predstavlja elementarnu nužnost za Jugoslaviju jer se njena sudbina nalazi u združenim rukama svih njenih naroda. Šest vekova kasnije, danas opet smo u bitkama i pred bitkama. To je ono što vi citirate. One nisu oružane, mada i takve još nisu isključene. To je jedna opšta rečenica. Ali, to niste naravno za ti, bez obzira kakve da su, one bitke ne mogu se dobiti bez odlučnosti, hrabrosti i požetvovosti. Bez tih osobina koje su onda davno bile prisutne na Kosovo. Naša glavna bitka danas odnosi se na ostvarenje ekonomskog političko, kulturno i uopšte društvenog prosperiteta za brže i uspešnije približavanje civilizaciji u kojoj će živjeti ljudi u 21. reku. Za tu nam je bitku pogotovo potrebno junaštvo, razume se nešto drugčije ali ona srčanost bez koje ništa na svetu ozbiljno i veliko ne može da se postigne, ostaje nepromenjena, ostaje večno potrebna. Neću da citiram ceo govor, ali sam ga citirao u delovima da se vidi koliko je zlonamerno izvučen citat, jer upravo kažem da nam predstoji glavna bitka za ekonomski, socijalni, kulturni prosperitet i tako dalje. A oni to vidjeli ste kako su upotrebili. Citirat ću još samo par stvari. U Srbiji nikada nisu živjeli samo Srbi. To ja govorim na Kosovu pre dva miliona ljudi. Danas u njoj više nego pre žive građani drugih naroda i narodnosti. To nije hendikep za Srbiju. And that is not a handicap for Serbia. Serbia is not handicapped by that fact. Iskreno sam uveren da je to njena prednost. I am firmly convinced that it is its advantage. U tom smislu se menja nacionalni sastav gotovo svih. And in that sense, the national composition of practically everybody is being changed. A naročito razvijenih zemalja savremenog sveta. Especially the developed countries of the modern world. Sve više i sve uspešnije zajedno žive građani raznih nacionalnosti, raznih vera i rasa. Socijalizam kao progresivno i pravedno demokratsko društvo pogotovo ne bi smelo da dopusti da se ljudi dele that people be divided on an ethnic and religious basis. The only differences that can be allowed in socialism and should be allowed in socialism are between the honest and the dishonest. 
Zato su svi That is why koji u Srbiji žive od svog rada everybody living in Serbia on the basis of their own work as honest citizens poštujući druge ljude with a respect showing a respect for other people and other ethnic groups and nations u svojoj su republici are in their own republic Jugoslavia je više nacionalna zajednica i ona može da opstane samo u uslovima potpune ravnopravnosti svih nacija koje u njoj žive. Kriza koja je pogodila Jugoslaviju Dovelo je do nacionalnih, ali i do socijalnih, kulturnih, verskih i mnogih drugih manje važnih podreba. Među svim tim podelama kao najdramatičnije se pokazane nacionalne podele. Njihovo otklanjanje olakšat će otklanjanje drugih podela i ublažiti posljedice koje su tu druge izazove. I tako dalje. Dakle, na Kosovu, na najveći srpski praznik Vidovdan, na događaj koji se opisuje kao erupcija srpskog nacionalizma, ovo je autentično. This is Ako mislite da nije, what was neka authentic. uzmu novine. This is what was said. If you don't believe that, you can take the news, uh, newspapers on 29th of June 1989 and you can read all about it. You will be able to read that exact same speech ni in that, ne bi those promenio u njemu ni jednu And reč. I wouldn't change a single word in that speech, even now, even today. I onda sam smatrao da Srbima pre svega, ja kao predsjednik Srbije, treba da kažem, Serbia should tell the Serbs tu gde su oni većina, da je nacionalna upravnost jedini ključ. A vidite sa kojim stepenom je malicioznost izvađena jedna parče rečenice koje u stvari je potpuno benigno i jedno opšte mesto. If you look at the whole, govor, I don't want to take up my time by reading the speech in full, and I wouldn't have done so had they not interpreted it in such a malicious and ill-intentioned way. But let me continue, let me continue with the issues javnosti, that I wish to address before ne, the uh, naravno, public. And not uh, my responses to the prosecution, because the degree of maliciousness has been demonstrated to such an extent that it can uh, leave nobody blind to the fact. What do you prove when you say the What do you prove when you say the Socialist Party appointed ministers? I know of no country in which a party which wins the elections, wins the free multi-party elections and gains a parliamentary majority is not able to appoint its ministers. I don't know in your countries, I know that in your countries, a party is appointed to the ministers. U Jugoslaviji mi smo za ministre imenovali čak nekad i neke vanstranačke ličnosti, a imali smo i u više faza ideje vlade narodnog jedinstva gde je više stranaka učestvovalo u vladi i nestranačkih ličnosti u svakom pogledu. I šta dokazujete time da je njima od toga zavisio materijalni status? Ja ne znam da li u zemljama u kojima rade predstavnici ovog kružila što ministri rade besplate i rade ili se možda možda i neke druge izvore prihoda have other kinds of revenue? Do they not receive salaries? In our country, ministers receive salaries. However, those who abuse their office by taking money have always been held responsible. Of course, if they are caught, we are the only country in the world over the past 10 years that arrested two of its ministers because of embezzlement of 700,000 Deutschmark, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, not only were they replaced, but they were also charged before criminal court and were sentenced. So what does this statement mean, that ministers 
salaries depend on their ministerial posts and that when a party znači, comes to power that it appoints ministers. What does that mean? Also, what does it mean when you use the wrong name for the Socialist Party of Serbia by calling it the Serbian Socialist Party as opposed to many parties that are called Serbian? Srbije, we were never a socialist Serb party. Srbije su, we were simply called naravno, a socialist pa party of Srbi, Srbia. And of course, the majority of the party members are Serbs, but if, there is not a single Yugoslavia in which there is not a single socialist party of Serbia. There are Mađara, Rumuna, Rusina, Albanac, Turak, Bulgar, Goran. The Socialist Party of Serbia, Hungarians, Albanians, Romani, Gorani, Egyptians, Muslimana. Muslims. Pa zar vi mislite da bi Do you really think that the members of all these ethnic communities that live in Serbia would join a party? vrši neku diskriminaciju, u ostalom, besmisleno je to više i dokazivati, jer realnost Jugoslovenska, koja je pokazala za 12 godina da nije bilo promjena strukture i da nije bilo nikakvih promjena, to sama pokazuje i potpuno obezređuje insinuacije koje smo ovdje čuli i koje su... The ethnic structure of Serbia and its population was not changed, and that fully refutes everything that has been said here. Neću više ni neke neke ovdje potpuno besmislice kao što su isticanje kako viša skupština je smjela raspustila skupštinu Kosova, skupština Srbije, pa u Ustavu je raspustila viša skupština, raspustila nižu skupštinu kad je prekršila Ustavu. I šta se? Kakav je to kriminal? Dissolved it. Why would that be a criminal act? Why do you say that all the directors of the media were members of the Socialist Party? The director of the Politica Daily newspaper was not a member of any party, and there were also other editors in chief and directors of newspapers who were not. They can write letters to you. They can report to you these people who were directors of the media who were freely operating in Yugoslavia opposition newspapers, pro-government newspapers. Na kraju krava, sama činjenica da je demokratija u zemlji govori o tome koliko mnogo opozicijonih medija. A sva se funkcionisala. Šta dokazujete... What are you trying to prove by saying that we had a ministry for communications with Serbs outside Serbia? There are over two million Serbs living from Australia to Latin America to the US, Canada, all the countries of Europe, including this country, the Netherlands. These contacts are nurtured. After all, such ministries exist in many countries. That is with contacts with the diaspora. Every year we have an assembly of the diaspora. There are people coming in from New Zealand, Australia, India, America, North America, and South America, etc. So what are you trying to prove by this? By saying that we had a ministry for contacts with Serbs outside Serbia. How can you be so impudent and quote an alleged statement of mine that Yugoslavia is finished when? Everybody knows that I advocated wholeheartedly that Yugoslavia should be continued and that as a basis for this continuity we established a federal republic of Yugoslavia when the former Yugoslavia fell apart. Do you think that in Serbia there were not voices, strong voices at that, that Serbia should secede from Yugoslavia? koji su bili žestoki antikomunisti. Especially according to those who were strongly Jugoslavia bila tamnica naroda i komunistička tvorevina i da je treba had been a dungeon ja sam tada of i njima nations govorio, and 
Jugoslavije i interes svih južoslovenskih naroda koji treba da žive ravnopravno i ona je nacionalni interes i srpskog naroda za koji se vi navodno zalačete a ne znate što govorite jer je Jugoslavija jedina mogućnost da Srbi žive u jednoj državi jer su oni po svim republikama Serbs can live in a single state because they live in all the republics. You abused that as well. The press abused that. That this was a program of a great Serbia, and that is why this was carried out. But what I added then is that in this way, all the Croats live in one state, all the Muslims live in one state, all the Macedonians live in one state. Do you know that in Serbia there are more Muslims than in Bosnia? interes i najveća nesreća za muslimane pre svega bila da se odvajaju iz Jugoslavije i da se podele jer više muslimana živi živi u Srbiji nego u Bosnu. Zar i njima nije bio interes da žive u jednoj državi? U dve republike pa šta? I ja uopšte ne znam odakle iz Mišljotina kako sam ja u Karadžođu Razgovarao s tuđima o podeli Bosne. Ja se jesam sastao u Karadžorđevu s tuđima i to ne samo u Karadžorđevu. Prvo je on došao kod mene u Karadžorđevu, to je tu negde na granici. Posle desetak ili petnaest dana sam ja išao kod njega u posetu isto tako u blizini. Smo se sastali kao što u objektu koji je sličan Karadžorđevu. Također razgovarali, obavestili javno da smo se sreli razgovarali. Smatrali smo da treba unapređivati odnos. Ne kažem da nije bilo ideja, ali nikad mojih i nikad od mene prihvaćenih o podeli Bosne, jer sam ja smatrao da se nijedno rešenje ne može doneti koje će biti na štetu bilo kog naroda koji živi u Bosni i Hercegovini. Taj moj stav poznat, on je bio poznat pre Daytona, on je bio poznat u Daytonu, na toj koncepciji Daytonu stavljena. Na formuli za koju sam se zalagao svih tih godina i javno. I da stvarno želite da budete nepristrasni, našli bi to u svakim novinama. Problem u Bosni može biti rešen samo formulom koja će podjednako zaštititi interese sva tri naroda. To je bio ključ za koji sam se ja zalagao. I to je ključ na kome se može da gradi budućnost Bosne i Hercegovine, ako se budu štitili interesi sva tri naroda koja uvijek žive. Nikakav drugi način. Svaki drugi će biti fijasko. Kako uopšte možete da govorite o takozvanoj politici etničkog čišćenja koja je navodno lansirana iz Beograda, kad svaku u Srbiji zna da je taj izlaz upotrebljavan isključivo za zločin. Ne postoji u Srbiji niko ko ne zna da je izraz etničko čišćenje upotrebljavan isključivo za zločin. Da se ne vraćam ponovo na srpsku i jugoslovensku realitu. Šta ste, ne znam šta ste imali da da dokažete time da sam prilikom boravka u Sarajevu posetio sedište Srpske demokratske strane. A šta što sam ga posetio? Na tom sastanku na tom sastanku u Sarajevu na kome su bili prisutni predsjednici svih jugoslovenskih republika i čiji je domaćin bio Alija Izetbegović svi su predsjednici bili tu i Izetbegović i Tuđman i Gligorov i Kučan. Svi su bili tu. Ja sam u ime Srbije prihvatio plan Izetbegović-Gligorov, koji je imao ipak neku državu u vidu, mada mnogo labavije. Samo da bi se izbegla bilo kakva dalja tenzija. Pitao sam tada Izetbegovića, o tome sigurno postoji magnetovolski zapad. Recite mi, gospodine Izetbegoviću, iz ovoga svega što ste mi rekli, da li će to ipak biti država? On je rekao da. To bi bila država. Rekao sam mu, nemojte više objašnjavati, ja taj plan prihvatam. Mi smo prihvatili taj plan. I onda su me njegovi 
protokoli i tako dalje odveli jer sam želeo da ih posjetim na njihov poziv sreo se sa celim političkim rukovodstvom istaknutim srbima u Bosni članovima Akademije nauka i tako dalje s njima razgovarao šta vi dokazujete time da se ih posjetio da se ih posjetio i sto puta ne jednom ne znam šta bi se tim neko kriminalno preduzeće koje pokušavate da vi ste ovde rekli juče moja slika je kroz sve to, a ja vam kažem slika neonacizma koji je rasturio Jugoslaviju i zločina koji su napravljeni i u Hrvatskoj i u Bosni i na Kosovu lebdi na tim. Ali novo kolonijalizma lebdi. A moja slika može tu da lebdi samo s ponosom otpora prema tom novom kolonijalizmu. Prema tom porobljavanju i rasturanju jedne zemlje koja je služila za primer čitavom svoju svetu po svojim međusobnim međunacionalnim odnosima, po svojoj slobodi, demokratiji, bezbednosti, razvoju i zalaganju za pravdu širom sveta. Šta dokazujete uopšte u vezi sa Srbijom? U vezi sa Srbijom. Pričamo o bombardovanju Sarajeva. Kada možete, kad bi uposlili taj ogromni aparat za koji trošite ogromna sredstva, da nađete čak i u novinama koliko puta je Srbija ne u licu, ne znam, nekog građanina, nego u zvaničnim izjavama vlade. Dok sam ja bio predsjednik Srbije, osudila bombardovanju Sarajeva. U vreme kad je Dobrica Ćosić, predsednik Sarajeva, od 92. godine bio koji može da posvedoči, on je čuveni srpski pisac, između ostalom i akademik. Njemu i meni zajedno su celo rukovodstvo Ne mogu više da svetim ko je bio, ali glavni su svi bili Srba iz Bosne, u doba novcima gdje smo sedili, čvrsto obećali na naš zahtjev, nikakve naše njena mesta neće gađati. Kako vi zamišljate da neko ima kontrolu u drugoj državi? Kad sam čuo da postoje neki logori, tražio sam objašnjenje, zar je moguće da Srbi prave logore i dobio objašnjenje. Ne postoje nikakvi logori, postoje samo zatvori za ratne zarobljenike, koji se tamo zadržavaju kratko, a onda razmenjuju po principu svi za sve. To je čvrsto uveravanje koje sam nekoliko puta dobio. Danas se ovdje srećem sa ljudima koji su radili u logorima. I koji kažu da smo svi bili obmanuti oko toga. A možda i oni gore u rukovodstvu Republike Srpske. Jer gotovo ne mogu da poverujem da ljudi mogu na takav način da bilo koga obmanjuju. In such a way people can deceive other people. Ne razumem šta se dokazuje i mišljenjem nekih diagrama o nepostojećoj organizaciji u kojoj sami objašnjavate da nisu autentični nego ih predpostavljate na nekakve veze. Ne znam što bi vi pravi rečenja kad se znala šema vlasti ona piše u ustavu države. Sva se šta su nadležnosti vlade, predsjednika i ministarstva i ministarstva. I zašto bi neko pravio nekakvu organizaciju da podriva svoju sobstvenu državu? Why would somebody establish an organization in order to undermine his own state? Because any deviation from the system, I mean, after all, we adopted this constitution. If we wanted to adopt a different constitution, we would have adopted a different constitution. So I don't see what you're trying to prove when you say that services cooperated. Well, the services of many countries cooperate. The services of all your countries cooperate. Half of the things that were, had, that were fabricated here were created in cooperation with these services, and no court in the world would have said that. And then you're trying to prove something through that. They had a helicopter unit. You say, well, of course, they were transferring people who were ill, wounded. 
injured pre pre to the military ima. academy hospital Vaše in Belgrade. Bolesne. Well, you also transport uh, your sick people da. by helicopters and so on and so forth. But I really don't want to take up my time na komentarisanje jednog with zaista these comments. Potpuno rekao bih ih izraza jedne nemoći jer ovakve stvari koje smo slušali dva dana samo jedno pokazuju da vi u stvari nemate ništa i da zato morate da izmišljate da izmišljate nešto što na prvi pogled u Jugoslaviji svako zna da je neistina a na drugi pogled sve sve će shvatiti da je neistina this is untrue. And when the rest of the world looks at it again, they will realize that that's not true either. What we saw here on our monitors coming from Western sources, I am sure that there will be more and more honorable people in the West who will not bow their heads to the Western sources. They will not bow their heads to the Western sources. They will not bow their heads to the Western sources. Honor in order to be engaged in a media campaign. That is why this show, which is supposed to take place under the guise of a trial, is actually a crime against a sovereign state, against the Serb people, against me. You wish to try me šefa države u odbrani te države i tog naroda od terorizma i od najveće vojne mašinerije koju je ikad svet imao udružene sa terorizmom. Ovo je takođe i zločin protiv istine, a što je naročiti cinizam a što je naročiti cinizam what makes it particularly cynical is that it is a crime against justice as well. This is a competition between justice and injustice. The whole world knows this, that this is a political trial and that it has nothing to do with law whatsoever, not only because this is an illegal court. You said that you had rejected that altogether. But for many other reasons, too. Let me digress at this point, Mr. May. Yesterday, you gave me an answer, and then you interrupted me. You told me that you had made a ruling, that I did not appeal it, and that for you, that was the end of the story. I cannot accept that explanation. Not only on moral grounds, but... On legal grounds as well, because you know very well that habeas corpus cannot be ruled upon without a hearing. That is guaranteed. That is guaranteed by, the, by Article 9 of the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, Article 9.1 of the International Covenant on Basic Civil and Political Rights, Article 5 of the European Convention on the Protection of Human Rights and Freedoms, and also Article 7.6 of the American Convention on the Protection of Human Rights, because in this way, it is not only physical freedom that is violated, but basic human rights as well. It is for me to emphasize this yet again. You were duty-bound to schedule a hearing to hear the staff members of your tribunal here, those who took part in committing this crime, who were engaged in a conspiracy with the warden of the prison in Belgrade, who committed a crime, and he is therefore undergoing criminal proceedings now. You were supposed to hear from all the participants, and only then could you rule on whether these documents for which you say is the law that is applied in this court, only then can you rule whether these rules were violated or not. So this has nothing to do with justice or injustice because this court is illegal and because it is financed through donations, including sources like, for example, Saudi Arabia that entirely finance things like international terrorism. But also because, because this court accepts 
without evidence. And in this way, they inverted the basic principle that it is the prosecutor who bears the burden of proof, not the victim. The victim does not have to prove his innocence. In this way, we go back to the times of the Inquisition. So all the forces that carried out a crime against my country and my people are in this way, no doubt, engaged in a war. And by introducing so-called protected witnesses, secret witnesses, the category of false witnesses is given the right to exist. And obviously might becomes right rather than having the rule of law prevail. There is not a single element of a fair trial or of equality between the parties. Look at this. There is an enormous apparatus on one side, a vast media structure on that same side, all kinds of services on this same side. Everything is at your disposal. What's on my side? Javnu telefonsku govornicu u zatvoru. To je sve čim ja raspolažem. Da se ovdje sukobim. Sa najtežim klevetama upućenim na račun i naroda i države i moj i svih onih koje ste vi spominjali. Ja sam i onom veću koje Also this other chamber that was presided over by Mr. Jorda, I said, let me go free. The entire world knows that I am not going to run away from this battle, which has to come up with the truth. This would bring shame not only upon me and my family, but also my people and also the entire freedom-loving world that believes in freedom and justice. You know full well that I'm not going to run away. Sa slobode, Let me go free. Da, so that aktivno se postavim u ovo. Vi bi htjeli da mi plivamo na 100 metara s tim da meni budu vezane i ruke i noge. I to smatrate ravnopravnošću stranaka i fair suđenje. And let me swim that way, and you consider that to be a fair trial. And you are doing all of this in order to make the victims of aggression into the perpetrators and in order to carry out the orders of your masters. And I can say to you with full certainty that through this crime, the crime they committed cannot be legalized, although concealing one crime by another crime is something that most criminals invariably do. The crimes committed by NATO will never be legalized among my people. A pro-NATO power in Serbia or authorities in Serbia can accept and take over the tasks and assignments that it was given to condemn Serbia and subjugate it. But it does not speak for the people. It is not the voice of the people, and nor does it have the right to do so, to speak on the people's behalf. The first and greatest crime was the aggression itself, which represents a crime against peace. And the crimes of genocide were perpetrated child crimes against humanity and war crimes from the 24th of March 1999 when NATO attacked Yugoslavia up to the present day. In all countries, in all the NATO countries, the European Union and others under the influence of NATO, a great anti-Serbian and anti-Yugoslav propaganda was effected in order to keep quiet the mass crimes against the civilian population. Whether is this too fast for the interpreters? Ja slušam odjek ovdje, pa ću se prilagođavati.
Zbog toga su u većini zemalja izostale istinite informacije o zločinima Jugoslavije. O svom intenzitetu i vojnoj snazi agresija na Savjeznu Republiku Jugoslavije u najveće na svetu posle drugog svjetska rata. Preduzelo je alijansa od 19 najrazvijenih zemalja, 670 puta ekonomski moći po podacima on the basis of facts and figures, statistics, but this, uh, these figures are available to everyone, and countless times more powerful militarily speaking than Yugoslavia. NATO did not choose its victims. Children suffered, women, elderly people, All of them suffered. Ailing people, pregnant women, serious patients having to undergo dialysis, refugee columns, journalists and cameramen doing their job, farmers in the fields, salesmen at market places, Passengers on trains, passers-by on bridges. Whole housing blocks were destroyed. Whole centers in towns were destroyed. Everything was done in conformity with the statement made, and you all read it in the papers, that Serbia must be sent back to the Stone Ages. Of the total number of civilians killed, 30% were children. Of the total number of civilians seriously wounded and injured, 40% were children. And I'm only talking about civilians now. The bombing jeopardized 120,000 pregnant women, as well as the lives of newborn babes, some of which were born during airstrikes. 1,300,000 pupils during the bombing were not able to go to school. The entire civilian population, especially children, were under the effects of bombing, which went on round the clock, day and night, which caused trauma and other psychological disturbances and disorders that will be with them for the rest of their days. More than half the people that were victims in Kosovo were Albanian citizens, precisely those people for whose alleged protection the aggression was implemented and the perpetrators named the aggression humanitarian intervention and you will soon be able to see what this looked like. So a flagrant violation of Article 2 of the United Nations Charter without acquiescence from the United Nations. I don't think that that can be challenged. It was a grave violation of the United Nations uh, Charter and that this was done without acquiescence from the Security Council. Among others... The conventions on war law dating from Geneva 1949 and the additional protocol 2 of this convention uh, dating to 1970, uh, 1977 were violated. Other uh, rights dating back to 1996 were also violated and other international conventions as well. In addition to the international conventions, NATO violated the provisions of its own statute. According to which it is a defensive regional organization which can go into action only on the territory of its member states. With the aggression on Yugoslavia, it violated the constitutions and laws of the majority of NATO member states.
According to whose provisions it is forbidden to engage into these forms of armed aggression. The government of the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia has filed a lawsuit uh, with the International Court of Law with respect to the NATO aggression, demanding that uh, the court acknowledge that NATO violated um, the uh, provision on the use of force against other states and that in financing, equipping and supplying terrorist organizations in Kosovo, they violated their um, pledge not to meddle into the internal affairs of other countries, that by attacking civilian targets and killing thousands of women, children and elderly persons, they violated what they took on uh, with respect to civilian, the civilian population. You will also be able to see that it was the civilian targets that were NATO's main targets, and that can be seen by the victims themselves and the whole dynamics in which the operation was conducted. In Kosovo, in all the bombing campaigns, they only succeeded in destroying seven tanks. But, on the other hand, they did succeed in destroying many more hospitals. They hit many more hospitals than they did tanks. They hit many more schools than they did tanks. They hit many more health centers and nurseries and kindergartens than they did tanks. And all the other possible obligations that they had taken on. They used cassette bombs and violated the use of prohibited weapons. And she is lying on television. And he takes the grand prize that she has denied the use of cassette bombs. And she kept maintaining that until Mary Robinson saw these bombs and said on television that they had indeed used those bombs. And then they acknowledged the fact that. They had used them only after she said so on television. That the oil refinery and chemical facilities were bombed, which led to great ecological catastrophe. The use of weapons containing depleted uranium was a violation of the use of weapons of this kind, weapons that have detrimental effects, far reaching effects on the population and ecology, that companies were destroyed, health institutions communication networks, all this violated the regulation uh, regulating the right to life, the right to work, the right to information, the right to health protection, and other basic human rights. That the destruction of bridges on international waterways was a violation of the maritime laws, and that all that represented a crime which violates the obligations taken on with respect to the implementation of conduct aimed at the physical destruction of that particular group. For the crimes committed and the war crimes, the war damage is done. It is the alliance that is responsible and the member states that took part in the aggression on Yugoslavia as well as all other states which indirectly assisted NATO. In addition to the states, there are physical persons also responsible and accountable, those who issued orders, the heads of state and government. The ministry, ministers of defense, the secretary general of NATO himself, the military commanders and others, right up to the perpetrators themselves. I should now like to ask, as I have been promised the opportunity of showing photographs, as I am moving on to another area with concrete illustrations, I should like to have the set of photographs shown, please, and I'll tell you what they're about. I'll explain them to you in just a moment. On the 14th of April, 1999, I should like to have 
this set of photographs uh, placed on the Elmo, please, in order. One by one, and they all dakle, illustrate the event, which took place on the 14th of April. From 13.30 hours to 15.30 hours in Djakovica, Na putu Djakovica, just, just, on the road between just, Djakovica and Prizren. Just a moment, let's see if we can get this on. Yes. Dakle, na putu As I was saying, on the road from Djakovica to Prizren, Madana by the village of Madana Imea, on three occasions, a column izbeglica. of Albanian refugees Albanski was bombed. Albanian žena, refugees, mostly women, children and elderly persons, who were returning to their homes in vehicles, kolima. tractors and other trucks and trailers. Slikom. What has happened to the photograph the image. Would you take a look at these photographs, please? I can see them on my screen. Uh, may we go on to the next photograph, please? I'm... I am not getting... We have them not. Yes, we have them now on the screen. Mm -hmm. You can continue. Those, these are all peasants, farmers. A mother and daughter, victims in the village of Madanai. Let's go on to the next one. Nisu išli nikakvim autobusima. They weren't going in buses of any kind. They were using tractors and trailers. And everybody could see that they were civilians and peasants in their carts. Next, please. Ugljenisani leševi. Carbonized bodies. Imajte u vidu da imate sa obe strane fotografije, molim vas. And bear in mind that, you have, that the photographs are on both sides. Sa obe Each strane. Each piece of paper has a photograph on Možete each dalje. side. Let's go on. Next, please. Produžite. Next. Možete dalje. Next. Devojčica. A little girl. Dalje. Next. Starica. An old woman. Dalje. Next. Dalje. Next. Do I need to go further? Dajte dalje. Let's have some more. Next. Dalje. Next. Dalje. Next. Ugljenisani ljudi. Carbonized people. Burnt. Dalje. Next. Dalje. Next. Dalje. Next. Dalje. Next.
Dakle, to se dogodilo 14. četvrtog. That then happened on the 14th of April. Undoubtedly, as we're talking about the hour, 13:30 hours to 15:30 hours in broad daylight. Broad daylight. Građani su namerno. They were intentionally targeted. Ali ću vam reći zašto su građani. But let me tell you why they were targeted. Građani su jer su se vraćali u svoje selo. Because they were going back to their village. Suprotno koncepciji agresora. Contrary to the conceptions of the aggressor. Koji je medijski lansirao laži kako Albanci beže pred srpskom vojskom i policijom. Svi su morali da napuštaju sela. A niko nije smeo da se drzne da se vraća u sela. A niko nije smeo da se drzne da se vraća u sela. A niko nije smeo da se drzne da se vraća u sela. Pored bombi, sa vreme agresije bacani su i leci u kojima se na albanskom jeziku građani pozivaju da beže. U istom pravcu je delovala teroristička OVK koja je čak i ubijala neposlušne glave porodica koje nisu htjela da poslušaju da beže iz svojih kuće i svojih sela. I zahtevala da građani beže. To je još jedan dokaz sa dejstva između between NATO forces and this terrorist organization that was used in order to destabilize Yugoslavia. On the 25th of March, at 5 o'clock, Rožaj was bombed. I won't be able to quote all the examples because that would require ten days and I would become too tired after speaking for ten days. So I'm just going to give you a few illustrations and examples. On the 26th of March, the village of Grlić in the Danilovgrad municipality was bombed. On the 2nd of April, the village of Nogovac in the Orahovac municipality in Kosovo and Metokia, with a large number ranjenih. of people killed and many wounded and injured. Mnogo teško many seriously Evo, wounded and injured. Još samo da Let me also, I, I will also let you see Nogovac, four photographs from Nogovac. Aprila, On the 22nd of April, 0145 hours, the Kursumlia region, the village of Smokovo. Many people were killed and wounded there. So may we now see those photographs, please? On the 4th of April, another date, Čačak. On the 5th of April, Vranje was bombed. You can show this set of photographs together. You have photographs on both sides. We'll see the photographs and then we'll adjourn. Ili možda pošto to uzima dugo vremena da sad još jednu vam dam. Ali dobro završite to. Let's do the first lot first and then I'll give you an additional one. Show the photographs one by one. I assume that you can see the people killed better on your screens. They were mostly peasant women, villagers. Many people were buried. This peasant woman practically burnt to death as the result of the bomb. This is the photograph from Vranje that I mentioned, and generally they targeted housing lots. From the very beginning, you see the dates, the 25th, 26th, 27th of March, the beginning of April. They targeted family houses, civilian facilities and targets. They were the priority targets.
zlikovaca koji su odlučivali o tome.